Okay, welcome to my talk. Um, we already heard a lot about uh, the fascinating domain of immobility from the guys from Everest. While Everest is on the charging station side, uh, this project is more what happens behind a, char a single charging station. So all this back-end stuff uh, up to the energy providers, uh, distribution network operators, and so on. And why is uh, this important? Because in the energy domain, we have a lot of uh, safety and security regulations coming from the uh, government. And we have somehow to comply with it. Because in e-mobility, it's not only important that you have IT security, you also ha need to provide energy safety because everything is connected via the grid. And so when too many people behave badly, we will have the next blackout. So um, nothing changed since last year, so I skipped this because I only have 50 minutes. Um, in the past, the uh, immobility was quite simple. We had charging stations on one side and a back end on the other side. And they more or less have been communicating. In the last couple of years, we are uh, HTTP WebSocket communication. So this is the client, this is the server, everything is fine. But now uh, the situa situation changed a little bit. We have no longer a single charging station somewhere at the street. We have normally multiple charging stations at one location. So it's quite useful to have some middle box which combines the communication so that you save money when you want to communicate with the back end. Uh, this is nothing new. This, uh, a lot of vendors implementing it. There are even specialized vendors for this. It's already um, in the OCPP standard, but it's not really in greater detail. It's just mentioned that you could do it. Um, we want to dig deeper into this uh, problem and see what we need to realize in this. Next thing, um, when you have this middle box, it's very natural that you ha add additional stuff to this. So you not only want to combine the communication channel, you also have specialized energy meters which are now uh, located at the grid connection point. So monitoring the grid connection point the idea behind this is that you can do a local load management because you have only a limited capacity on your grid connection but want to share it between the charging stations and somebody must be in charge of how to share this energy. There are other projects who do the calculation uh, for this uh, but this is uh, the communication part and here the for the first time if you are a German people, um, you know, this fascinating world of smart uh, meter gateways, which is more or less specialized hardware from the, uh, uh, yeah, from the Federal Ministry for Security in Germany, which regulate this area because energy, as I mentioned, is a safety critical infrastructure. So they try somehow to improve the situation that most vendors uh, don't care that much about security and safety. Um, the first problem what we have, um, because I said we, we come from a very simplified view on this problem, where the connection from the charging station to a backend. So because of limitations of the OCPP protocol, we, at the moment, duplicate every connection between this charging or communication aggregation box and the back end. This is um, not only perhaps a, a design flaw which nobody cares about, it's also starting to become more and more a, a security problem because the only security we have is uh, HTTPS, so transport layer security and transport layer security and in this box, here you have another transport layer security, so you have a, a split communication channel. So your IS, IT security is no longer given because this could be a man in the middle. It's getting even worse because now we have specialized companies who sit in the middle between your 
charging stations or your aggregation box and your backends or even multiple backends and want to do analytics for you because normally the charging station management um, operators or vendors just manage charging stations. They are not that much into analytics. So very often they even those sit in the middle and then you realize, okay, now the problem is getting more and more complicated because people who only are interested in Excel sheets sit in the middle of your critical infrastructure and maybe they not only analyze what you're sending, possibly here could be sitting Mr. Putin and send commands back because you have no chance to stop him. So, um, the first thing what we want to have, um, and this is also not nothing really new, we want to share this web socket connections. Um, for this, we need to adapt a little bit uh, the OCPP protocol. There's already an internal draft how you could do this. But when you look closer at this uh, draft, so internal means uh, internal in the Open Charging Alliance, um, which is the organization managing the OCPP protocol. Um, you see there are perhaps a, a couple of drawbacks. Um, the first thing what we obviously need, we need to add some uh, additional routing information so that we know we are sending from this box to that box. Um, and my idea is, or my proposal is, we can do a lot of interesting things if we copy this good old concept um, of the record route taken, um, which is also an IP4, uh, IP version 4, um, optional option, um, and so we can implement this much more user-friendly. Next thing is um, in the OCPP internal draft, um, we have more or less source routing. So the sender gives the in, uh, includes the path through the network into the uh, request. This is well, uh, well known, it's a, a valid way to do it, but it has also a lot of limitations because when the network is changing very often, you have a scalability problems. So it's much more logical to use a normal routing table in every box. You can use this typically auto learning what you know from Ethernet uh, switches, which also learn which uh, communication partner is on which uh, port and implement it more easily. No, but it's getting more and more worse because we are uh, in a modern world. A uh, charging stage management system today is no longer a monolithic thing on a notebook uh, somewhere in the Netherlands. It's a highly complex system of microservices and these microservices are even from different operators. So we have very, very, very often complex systems where the asset management, so which charging station is located where and coming from which vendor is in, uh, within an SAP database. Then you have another database for all this real-time energy measurements and so on and so on and so on. So you realize, okay, now we have a bit of a problem because we have a critical infrastructure, but in the back end, we have a multitude of loosely coupled systems without much of security. Um, so the traditional uh, OCPP security model is also no longer sufficient here. Um, for this, very simple, um, it would be nice to have digital signatures. Again, there's an internal draft at, in the Open Charging Alliance, but this had signatures on the transport uh, part of OCPP. So it's limited to OCPP, but it would be much more interesting to have it on the OCPP message it itself because then we can send end-to-end -end messages. And end-to-end -end means in this case from the EV to the energy uh, distribution grid operator or to the EMP or to the smartphone of the driver and so on and so on. We will later see a lot of use cases how to make use of it. Um, what do you, when you want to have uh, signatures, the next problem is you need 
as usual, you reduce the complex problems onto a key management problem. So you need something like uh, signature policies um, to define who, which signature is valid, which signature should I use, which signature should I verify. Um, when you have this um, signatures implemented, you can extend it to user roles because at the moment everything in OCPP is more or less one user. You have no differentiation of this communication partner is only allowed to set energy command, the other one can also change communication parameters or whatever. Um, this can be implemented using the signatures. And last but not least, um, at the moment OCPP is only using uh, the text frames of uh, HTTP WebSockets, but there are a lot of useful use cases for binary streams, especially when you look at firmware updates or log file downloads, because these are at the moment external HTTP requests, and this makes your network security more complicated. So when you I would integrate it into the OCPP protocol, you could close down your network and only allow OCPP communication and uh, improve the security. So, uh, nice, all these little, little details, but what are the real use cases for this? So in Germany, we have since uh, the first January of this year, there's a nice new law that uh, your energy provider can send you messages via a highly regulated infrastructure to reduce the amount of energy you're using because we want to more renewable energies and so on and so on and so on but it's external uh, additional hardware. Why not use the existing infrastructure for this? The reason, um, because it's not secure and safe enough at the moment. Would it be secure and safe enough? We could perhaps talk to these guys and say, okay, look, we have now improved our, our infrastructure. Why don't we remove this additional hardware? Um, the same is um, in the same law we have uh, a possibility that an energy provider can get your measurements. Um, this is again a regulated uh, use case. Um, we would do this about, uh, with our normal OCPP infrastructure. We have charging tariffs, charging tariffs coming from immobility providers or s someone else. They should also be assigned secure data which is immutable and then used in OCPP. Good part is that in the upcoming or in the next version of OCPP um, there will be some support for tariffs, uh, not yet end-to-end -end signed tariffs, but at least half the way. Um, there is this interesting use case where you want to uh, pay for your charging but in an anonymous way, so you don't have an account somewhere, um, but you pay with your smartphone. Uh, in the regulation, they are talking about QR codes. Wouldn't it be interesting that you use this QR code to get something like a direct communication channel to this charging station over all this complicated infrastructure, but it's secure, so that you have something like a remote control, because nobody stands, even, not even for 20 minutes, in front of a charging station just to look what's happening. They want to have it on their phones. But for this you need a secure channel. Um, the same idea, but for another uh, user group, is um, the charging station operators or the energy people also often don't know what's really going on on this charging station because it's very limited what they can send over the uh, wire at the moment, um, so they use a lot of AI to invent what might be happening on the charging station. Um, but in reality it would be much nicer if we would have something like this digital twin idea, just send everything, what is important, somewhere where it uh, can be analyzed. But again, we have no secure infrastructure in the middle because every shitty marketing company could manipulate our data. Um, better German calibration law, that is my favorite topic, but we had this already last year. We have national contact points who want to collect all this data and statistics about your charging station infrastructure, how good or not good it is. 
No security, no privacy at the moment. The same problem as usual. The really biggest problem is this is on the street. Um, yes, more or less last slide. This is on the street. This is also on the street. So no physical access security here. So even when we have encryption signatures, we cannot be sure if not somebody is sending us a lot of crap. Okay, it's, it's a bit harder to manipulate a lot of charging stations on the street. But if you're Putin, probably you would try it anyway. So how or what can we do to analyze it here uh, if this is a valid request or valid information or not? And I try to my best to get it into the OCPP standard. But also at the Open Charging Alliance, we have a normal problem. There are many leaching companies and not so much real contributing companies. So if you find this use case is interesting, if you think this is interesting for you, for your company, for whatever, feel free to contribute to this project. Feel free to become a member of the Open Charging Alliance and help us to get it out on the street. Thank you so much for your presentation.